Hello and welcome to another episode of Invalid Entry. It is the 12th day of Advent, which means we're doing another video on cool, fancy uh, fabric, uh, fabric, Python, cool, fancy Python libraries, which I think you should know about. Even if you don't use them, I think they're worth knowing about. Today we're doing a library called Watchdog. Watchdog is a very specific library. It's halfway between a library and a framework because it does work in a particular way. It does take over your main uh, thread. Um, but it's very cool. Uh, you may use this as a parallel process to some other things. Uh, we're going to build a very, very tiny watchdog application today. And what it's doing, it's going to watch file system events. I especially saw making a file in a particular folder uh, and then triggering activities upon those events. It is cross-platform. It works on Windows, Mac and uh, Linux and FreeBSD. And it uses iNotify or KQ or uh, various things. There are some limitations on Windows, but not massively. The main thing is it's not polling the disk. It's not actually get hitting the disk continuously. So it's very lightweight in terms of resource usage for monitoring fast system events, which also makes it very efficient. Um, basically, you do need to watch out that you have a maximum number of limits on your file system when you're using KQ. Um, and that's a standard thing in Linux and um, or Max and FreeBSD that you have to watch that, that you don't open up too many file scripts at the same time. It's very common in things like Nginx to change your file, Max file script limit. Um, the example in here is good. The, I actually think the example in the examples folder is better, but it's not always clear where you get that documentation from. Uh, so we're just going to build it very quickly here. Um, and I do have a crib sheet which I'm going to work from. So what we're going to do is we're going to import uh, a few things at the top of the file. And we're going to do from uh, watchdog dot observers import observer. Now the observer is going to be the main thing we're going to be doing. Uh, and from watchdog.events import logging event handler, which is the most of the main example, but we're also going to import a file system event handler as well. And that will become clear why in a few moments. Uh, what we're going to do here is we're basically going to hard code the path. So the path is going to be uh, is going to be in. Okay, so I've got this folder here called in inside my run. I also have one called out. What you usually do is I have a specific folder I'm going to put files in. And I have another folder that, that I'm going to move these files to or process them out so I'm not triggering myself on the way around. So path equals in. Uh, you might want to do some call over at system.path things to make sure those have the right slashes and if you go make things across things. Um, and what you're going to do is you just go event handler equals um, logging ev event handler like that. And then observer equals observer as an object. What we want to do is we want to schedule the event handler to the path recursive equals true. So if someone makes a subfolder, uh, I want to know about it. If someone puts a file subfolder, I want to know about it as well. Okay, it doesn't have to be true. That could be false for you. Uh, observer dot start. And then what we're going to do is go into a bit of a loop here. Uh, while true, I would actually put this into, this works well with async sort of task. So you could put this in async time dot sleep uh, for, ooh, 90 time. Uh, and I'm going to put it to one actually. And then uh, finally, what we do is observer dot stop and observer dot join. And the reason for that is it take, makes a few seconds to stop and you want it to stop before the Python exits because uh, it's opening file descriptors and you want those file descriptors to close correctly otherwise you can have problems opening them again in the future. So, python um, run me .py. Um, I've got a mistake on line 17 which looks about here. Um, and what is my mistake? First person to spot it uh, it's got an end of file whilst parsing. Oh, did I not hit save? There we go. There was no mistake. It was all user error. Now, not that much is happening, so I've got this folder called in. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab up a file from my desktop. I've got a little uh, bit of artwork here. Uh, a screenshot there. Put that in there. And what happens is absolutely nothing whatsoever. Fantastic. I have one. And the reason for that is that I didn't configure basic logging because logging handler uses logging. So from um, just import logging. Uh, I haven't actually done any of the, of the core Python libraries. Um, 
I just haven't done it. So let me just configure logging really quickly. Let me just fix my import spacing here. There we go. Run that again. Take a file out. As you see, the moment I took the file out, it's saying the file was deleted, the folder was modified, and then I can also put the file back in again. I want to put it into the in folder, get that right. And it says I created a file in there. What was the name of the file that was created? And so on. Immediately. It's absolutely very low CPU usage. Wonderful little library. But that's with logging. I don't really care about logging too much. I want to do some more fun than logging. That's uh, so why I can give them my logging. I'm not going to use logging. Yeah, okay. Give it logging. What we're going to do is we're going to create a class. I, we haven't done much on classes in this series. It's all just been functional programming. Uh, my event handler. I mean, we've used classes. We just haven't we used objects. We haven't made any classes. File system event handler. And that was um, that was the function that we included up here, the other one. And what this here is, it should have some things in it. So the one things it sh may want to have, there's about four or five. You've got on created, on deleted, on modified, on moved, those kinds of things def on created self event. So you're going to get past the event. I'm just going to print the event off for the moment. But I'm not doing anything on the other two. So what we're going to do now is we can say event handler because my event handler like that. Um, control C that. And run it again. And it's running. Uh, so over here I can now delete my file from the folder. Nothing gets printed off. Put my file in the folder. I get something printed off. Take it out. Nothing happens to it put it back in again, it happens. Now you notice in here it's got a couple of properties, it's got the event type, or it's created, but we know it's created because it's on the uncreated function. Um, but you may actually have two or three of these go to a more generic function, so you may have like an on uh, process event function that matters what kind of event it was. But I've also got the source path here, which is nice. So I can then say um, if event dot is directory, or maybe even better if not is event directory, then I might do something to this file. I might uh, process it, virus scan it, whatever I want to do. So I might go here at this point, uh, event dot, uh, or other, with uh, open uh, event dot source directory, uh, source, source, source path. There we go, uh, as a file pointer, fp dot read, read lines, Whatever I want to do. Obviously, this is an image. That's not going to work. Uh, but that's basically it. This will now run this event very quickly the moment the file is dropped in or as quickly as the OS will pick it up. Uh, much more efficiently than you doing your own code to say, pull the directory, has there been any changes, have there been any changes. It is super, super efficient at doing that. Um, and that's it. That's really the entire library. How you use this library in your own application really depends on your architecture. You do have to be aware. One of the things I said at the start of the series was about how you, the library should fit in with your architectural system. Because this is going to have this um, starting background thread running, you have to be aware of that. Um, you also have to be aware you have to schedule the individual folders, so planning out what folders you're going to monitor and what folders you're not going to monitor, filtering out false events. So if I now move this to the out folder, for example, does that cause a delete? Uh, also, because you interact with the file system which people are dropping files into or other systems might be dropping files into, be aware that you may trigger yourself. If you drop a file in, you may drop it into the next step. You can use it as like a file-based ESB, which is kind of cool. I've seen systems based upon that, very successful systems based upon that. Be also aware someone may delete the file in the middle of you processing it. Uh, normal file processing things apply. This isn't really one for run inside Jupyter. This is really one that you want as a little microservice. Very cool for home things. Uh, I've done things on my big screen with it, so if I drop a file in, it will then display it immediately, those kinds of little tricks. Um, but yeah, you can use it for triggering events. Because it's file-based, it interacts very nice with other applications. So you can do things like um, out, have, a, have a command line which is processing some images uh, and or making audio or sampling things and put some in a folder, and this can then trigger another set of processing on those things or backing them up or triggering more processing. So it's a great little thing for gluing things together. Um, I love this little library. It's it's nice. It works. You can't ask really for anything else. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit like and subscribe because there's more coming. There's another 12 videos coming. We're only halfway through, which is um, kind of scary because they, they get harder to make as they go through. Uh, but we've broken the back of this now. We're halfway through Advent and I will see you all tomorrow.